Welcome back. You're watching us here on uh, Bazaar Morning Call on CNBC TV 18. This morning, the SGX Nifty actually earlier was indicating that the start could be mildly in the positive terrain. But now that has picked up steam, almost 80 points on the upside. But then that also is not particularly great news because every time we've seen a big gap up, that's only resulted in easier selling by those who are looking at uh, resistances on the way up. So let's see how that goes. Friday was a particularly brutal day where we saw the mid cap index fall almost 1200 points. And uh, 14 stocks declining for every stock that advanced. Prakash Diwan, who's a market expert, joins in for some fundamental stock analysis. Prakash, I hope your Christmas was good. Uh, will Santa be, uh, you know, uh, kind to the bulls towards the end of this year? Uh, is that rally coming in? And in mid-caps, after this sell-off, have you seen any uh, opportunities emerge? Good morning, uh, Mangalam. So, I, I think... I think... More than the rally, uh, what we are all now looking for is is probably relief in, uh, in the way the market's sliding down on a uh, slate, which is, which is really rapidly uh, finding its way. Uh, so, you know, the market has to take a pause somewhere. And, and I think the numbers tell you that uh, at least FIs have started uh, building up more shorts than longs, which which is good news because any, any upside could probably lead to some sort of a short covering bout. But uh, fundamentally, the market is probably getting better into that uh, or, or getting a, into a healthier zone of sorts from a valuation perspective. And remember, we are just around the corner. The result season is around the corner. January, I think, uh, second week, 10th or 12th or something is when things start uh, coming up uh, in terms of earnings. And the market will have some other triggers to look at as well, Mangal. So my sense is you just sort of wait it out for this one week, uh, which is very, going to be extremely critical and volatile. But, uh, you know, the mid-caps, the broader markets particularly, are the ones where the froth was quite a bit. And, and you have more of, you know, look at who's selling. It's it's probably uh, largely H&Is or, you know, uh, uh, clusters of investors who, who work on certain stocks or certain sectors or themes. They are the ones who are actually exiting the market, not not the FIs as much or the DIs at all. So it's, it's going to be a very good uh, uh, cherry picking time for all of us. Uh, the unfortunate part is there's very little activity around this time. So... The volumes are a bit deceptive. Uh, at times, you know, things fall in such meager volumes that you're really not very sure how long this could last. And that's that's precisely why everybody's waiting for some sort of a stabilizing or equilibrium. But yeah, there's, there's lots that's emerging, even in the large cap for that matter. I mean, you have the likes of LNT and all, which are looking stronger by the day, given the order book, given the execution, the pace of the execution. I think some of, some of the themes that are emerging, like uh, on the infrastructure side, where the government is likely to spend uh, and, and have probably a one full year of growth. Uh, the, the road sector, for instance, extremely promising, you know. So defense continues to offer you opportunity. Cap goods off, continue to offer you opportunities. And, and, and there will be some specific names which will start looking very, very promising once valuations ease out. So, yeah, lots, lots to do uh, in terms of homework, maybe not buying as yet. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> no, got that. You know, Sonia uh, Mangalab, just one thing. Uh, I, you know, a lot of people said that the fall is due to COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the government get, getting very vigilant about COVID, etc. Uh, it, it perhaps it could be possible. We don't know the full extent of what kind of uh, sort of a feeling that it, it generated, right? Because yeah. the government was saying there were meetings being held. The prime minister was uh, holding a meeting, and it's possible uh, there is a bit of uh, fear or, uh, but. You know, I think uh, it's been it's been fairly clear that what what the government is doing is basically being vigilant, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not uh, it's not it's not saying at all. We we've had expert after expert, and I think it's an important point to yeah. make for retail uh, investor who may be watching. Uh, experts have said that this is nothing like what we've had in 2021 or 2020, yeah. etc. So while the risk of spillover from what is happening in China is there, mm -hmm. uh, but. You know, it's a population which is uh, extremely different in terms of exposure right. to the exposure to the virus. We've had many waves of virus. For China, it's wave two. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think that, that's a that's a that's a point to be made because I think people will, and I've had conversations even on Saturday and Sunday and uh, with uh, you know market participants. Uh, and uh, this COVID thing keeps coming back. That mm. maybe you know who knows what may happen, right? Yeah. Uh, and that is a fair point. Who knows? No one knows. We'll be wiser in hindsight. But at this stage. Given what the government is saying and telling us, etc., it's being be vigilant, which is par for the course, but, but nothing think, beyond that. I think it's not as much a health issue as it is an economy problem, right? Mm. So if China shuts down for longer, then manufacturing, supply chain, travel, business could be lower than your point is. What your point is absolutely. If so, if China reverses course, yeah. then the spillover from that could happen. But yeah. I think mm. the panic here is if here, you know, in India, we will see yeah. a repeat of what we saw. 
you know, maybe lockdown type stuff. I mean, I don't think that we should even go there. I think that's not a, that's not a uh, uh, something to kind of even consider, at least at this stage. Uh, so, just wanted to make that point. Uh, Prakash is, of course, with us. Prakash, uh, so in this correction that we are seeing, wh what would you would you wait for prices to get even uh, sweeter, more attractive, or uh, there are things which are already uh, looking that way? So, uh, good morning, Prashant. So, I think. As I said earlier, you know, it's the, the worrying part is that uh, whatever is happening is happening on very thin volume. So when, when you're trying to accumulate stocks, uh, given the fact that there's still some residual selling pressure in certain counters, uh, which, which have been very popular of sorts throughout 2022, uh, you, you, you could probably see some selling come again, you know. But what's, what's very interesting is that there are names that are giving you great opportunity from a longer term perspective and, and notwithstanding any disruptions because of COVID or because of the China supply issues. So let me give you an instance, uh, for example on this. So look at United Spirits. We've seen the stock consolidate so beautifully uh, for, right from the 660 zones all the way to 900 plus. It kind of keeps on vacillating between this 890, 900, 870, 900 zones. But the way the, the, the uh, uh, channel checks tell you what's happening on the ground in terms of price hikes, in terms of you know reduction in raw material costs, which was a big issue for them, let's say, about three months back, whether it was packaging, labels, bottling, everything. Now, all that seems to be easing out. And it's got nothing to do with COVID or China or, for that matter, anything which could be very long term. So I think it's just sentiment. It's just that somebody needs to get out because of certain positions that they've taken over leverage or whatever. And that's that's kind of giving you opportunities to buy these stocks at least eight, ten percent. And the good stocks, mind you, haven't really fallen beyond 10, 12 percent. It's it's the ones that were overvalued or were weaker on the fundamentals where that 25, 30 percent cuts have happened in the small cap. So it's 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 distinctly uh, a very clear screen that tells you that it's differentiated the boys and from the men's or the men from the boys whatever way you look at it, it's it's giving you opportunity to uh, to plug into some of the stronger names. And that's that's what this opportunity should be leveraged on. And this could probably go on till Jan. I mean, I think the, the sell-off could have different reasons, but there will be corrections. There will be a little bit of cut in the froth uh, given, given the overvalued zone that we were in. So all that's kind of adding up very well. Uh, you just have to be a bit patient to buy into the right stocks. Don't buy everything on day one. Keep on staggering it. Keep on picking your stocks. Uh, wait for the right levels for them to to be attractive enough for you to get in. 